With this video, we're getting started into chapter two. Things are gonna seem a little weird because in chapter one, we were working with things that were sort of familiar, points, lines, planes, segments. In chapter two, what we're gonna look at are methods and techniques for verifying that any strategies that we come up with to work with those things, points, lines, planes, etc., are actually valid strategies. So this is looking at logic and making logical arguments. And we're going to write proofs in this chapter, but don't be afraid. We're going to take it one step at a time. So to start things off, we need to take a look at different types of reasoning. So we're going to start with inductive reasoning. With inductive reasoning, what you do is you make a general conclusion, but you base that only on specific or a finite number of observations or events. So this is a process of reasoning. So as a quick example, Let's say that you're driving in a new town on the highway and some other driver cuts you off. And you keep driving, 10 minutes later, another driver in that same town cuts you off. So based on just those two events, you can make a general conclusion that all of the drivers in this town are going to cut people off. That's a pretty general statement that's applying to all of the drivers in that town. You didn't observe every single driver in that town. You just observed two of them, but that general conclusion is based on two events. So that conclusion you made is actually what we call a conjecture. Anytime you make a conjecture, this is the conclusion reached based on those finite events using that inductive reasoning. So in that last example, that conclusion that all of the drivers are going to cut you off, that's what we call a conjecture. Now the process of arriving at that conclusion is what we call inductive reasoning. So the conjecture is what we reach. How we get there is the inductive reasoning. So one thing that we typically look at in math is it seems kind of strange, but we try to like show that we're wrong before that we show that we're right. We usually do that by trying to find something called a counterexample. So this is any specific thing that shows our conjecture is actually false. So any specific case event, observation, etc., that disproves a conjecture. So in the driving example, suppose you're driving along after those two people cut you off, and then later somebody else in that town did not cut you off. Well, your conclusion that all of the people in that town are going to cut you off is wrong because one person didn't. So that is a counterexample to that conjecture. That's all you need to know for 2.1, and we'll pick up on 2.2 next time.